social media, social club. Social media, social club. Social media, social club. <laughs> oh. That was a different kind of a barber shop. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like I that. Like that. Nice. So welcome to another episode of Social Media Social Club, uh, the podcast where we talk all things social media culture. My name is Josh. My name, name is Hannah. <laughs> today we've got content lead and zillennial <gasps> Louise with us today. What's a zillennial? What privileges does that give you exactly? Um, it means that I can be rude about both millennials and Gen Z because and like what we need. I, I have... None of the cool bits of either. <laughs> All of the embarrassing bits of both. Like I wear dungarees, but I have said doggo in the past. <laughs> Fair enough. That's big of you to admit that. <laughs> That's big. You know, I'm aware of my own flaws. Uh, we're going to be talking about... What are we going to talk about, Hannah? Uh, yassification. 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 <laughs> this is... Welcome to the yassification of Social Media Social Club. Yes. <laughs> Today, we're talking about um, face filters. And their impact on social media, their impact on people, all that kind of stuff. Yep. So, Louise, you kind of brought this, to- this topic to us mm-hmm. a little bit. Why did you want to talk about face filters? So, I think back to when we were in school and we were children, like, you know, because we're all kind of back in the day. Um, and I felt like we were a lot more aware about social media, the dangers of social media. Like, you know, that's how we ended up with those really terrible emails, like, cool boy 94 at hot because <laughs> you didn't reveal anything yeah. and i feel over time social media's got kind of more dangerous more data there's more things that are going to like mess with kids but they're less aware and it kind of worries me especially when it comes to like filters and because i go on tiktok and i see these like you know 13 year old lassies waist smaller than like their wrist and people go that's not real and then the comments are, oh you're just jealous it is real and it's like like, do kids not know how to spot this stuff anymore? Mm. And I think it's going to have like a really bad impact on many people, not just young people. Do you think there's any place for? Is it just like there's a problem with all filters? Do you think it was like? Is it just certain kinds of ones? Do you think? I think there is some fun to it. Like the one that made yourself look older. There was mm-hmm. a trend a while back. I mean, that was just deeply horrifying for myself because <laughs> I didn't believe it. And then I saw my own gran looking back at me. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, wait. Oh wait, how did they get that photo off of my gran? <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen all these like, you know, youngins going like, oh my God, I can't wait to get to that age. They looked 35 at best uh-huh. and I looked haggard. Well, I, yes. looked like I, I looked like I just came out of Mecca Bingo. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a rough, a really rough time mm-hmm. I think though like that to me is really interesting because that was so well done mm-hmm. that it was actually like it's frightening but it is it is amazing that the talent that people have that are making these filters now mm-hmm. I think that see when filters started because I think it did start on snapchat correct me if I'm wrong but it was just like such silly fun like remember the one where you opened your mouth and then rainbow came out. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's the thing that I really remember. And it was just like so fun and silly. And it was like, obviously I don't look like that. Obviously I don't have a rainbow coming out of my mouth. But then I, as I was showing you guys before we started this, I would not have posted a picture on Instagram for a while mm-hmm. there without having some sort of like animal filter on my face for some <laughs> godforsaken reason. Like I cannot post until my ears are on. And it's like a photo of me, I'll maybe maybe give some of these to the podcast to put them in. But a photo of me with like the animal ears. But I think what I didn't realise I was like, oh they make me look really cute. But I don't think I really realised what it was doing to my actual face mm-hmm. under that and that it was making my eyes bigger, it was making my face smaller, my lips bigger, your nose smaller. So it's like these things have actually the kind of face altering stuff has actually been there since the start, but we maybe weren't as aware of it mm-hmm. then as we are now and I think there are obviously like some quite fun things that you can do with it and I think I'm actually interested in the behind the scenes of how people make them I've seen some TikTok videos of people making filters and like how they actually put that together and I think it's the people that are making them have some talent but I just worry that they're not putting their talent in the right place Mm -hmm. for making you know a positive space on the internet like I think there could be positive executions and like you're saying there was fun stuff about it like There is still fun things out there, but I think there's this creeping trend towards normalising not seeing your own face. And that's quite disconcerting that now the standard for a lot of people, and particularly young women, is that you should not look like what you look like. And 
you know, there can be the push that it's body positivity because it makes you feel good, it makes you want to post stuff. But it's this huge step away from body neutrality, which this is going into heavier topics, but I think, you know, it's just trying to sell people stuff. <laughs> it's capitalism. Well, this, this, <laughs> it's a bit like the, the whole AI argument. Like, we, it's, it's amazing that you can do this technology. How is it actually benefiting the mm-hmm. consumer? And the answer is, it doesn't feel like yeah. it really is that much. Like, there's, yeah. there's small incremental benefits, but the actual benefits, people kind of saying, you know, with... Uh, you know, filters. Oh, it increases. You know, like it's, it's fun and it's, it can increase your confidence. Yeah, but it's like a short-term fix for ultimately. But it also it's terms, so it's like with new, neutrality. And why is your confidence bodies. based on you having large dog ears or having cute written eighty times across <laughs> okay, your nose? Targeted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think though, it's if you are increasing your confidence with that, that's you're actually then taking away the impact that it has on others because then increasing your confidence through adding a filter and putting out a version of yourself that isn't necessarily true or real or authentic, the people that are seeing that are then like, oh God, yeah, like I don't look like her. And they then start to feel mm-hmm. that. So I think there is such a bigger issue than, I know that people will use them for their own reasons, but it's then if you actually do put that out there on the internet or you send it to people, you are then part of the bigger yeah. issue where yeah. it's actually then affecting other people that see that image. And I think that's why it's so important for celebrities to have accountability and to, fe- uh, and yeah. to, and to be held accountable for it. And I'm not saying celebrities in themselves can't be victims, they very much are when it comes to things like this, but they, they, they need, they, it needs to start with them because ultimately they're the ones of the platform. Like, yeah. like individuals can perpetuate it for sure, but like I think ultimately it gives people at the top that are affecting these things. It's like you said with the magazines, the, the legislation needs to happen. Yeah. Particularly when it comes to, I feel like there's two main groups here. Like We're quite fortunate we're in that kind of middle group that, you know, the internet was a scary place when we were younger, but I feel like we were very digitally aware and aware yeah. of like the dangers, aware of like what could happen, and that's kind of informed our whole way we use the internet and use digital platforms. Mm-hmm. But I feel there's this very young group who are teenagers now, um, or maybe like early 20s now, and then there's the older group, and I feel like they're really the kind of unspoken victims of this. Young people they don't seem to know that you can make a way smaller to, like beyond anatomical possibility. Yeah. They think that's just how it looks. They're like, and look at the impact, baby Botox, lip fillers for your 18th birthday. There's like a huge uptick and yeah. I pulled stats. I was pretty... Uh, give, give us I, the stats, I pulled guys. stats as well, but let's hear I stats. I pulled no stats, so I so want to hear both of yours. <laughs> according to a study by Patient Claim Line, 41% of Gen Z who underwent um, plastic surgery said that filters on social media partly informed their reasons for doing it. So essentially they're seeing themselves and they go, I don't like that. I've I seen another, uh, it's a, a 21 survey by Dove and it was 80% of teenage girls said they had changed their appearance in an online photo by the age of 13, um, which is quite sad. Yeah, it's, it's sad, but it's more because actually we have access to the internet at a younger age and to be like putting images of ourselves out at a younger age than probably... Yeah we did and if that is just the the norm and like what's expected like as soon as you as soon as you do it once and put a filter on your face once it does alter how you see yourself and how you expect to see yourself when you open a camera I often think um something that I find quite alarming is sometimes when you open TikTok to film a video there is already a filter on or there's already smoothing effects or it's already giving you a bit of like lipstick or something I know I've went to film TikToks with you Josh and I've been like my god man you are glowing (laughs) that lipstick is just gorgeous and I'm like but TikTok's just added that I didn't ask it to I didn't tell it to do that but it's actually it's sometimes I need to remove it It it's just automatic Automatically Aye. adding and like a filter, which and, I think. And, and don't get me wrong. See if you're feeling a wee bit kind of like, oh, I'm a, a wee bit like I'm not quite looking as good as I like I would like to today, and yeah. I'm, I'm filming this thing. That's handy, you know. Yeah. Like and it's kind of it, if, if there's just one wee blemish, but it's not a good thing to rely on emotionally. Yeah, I think uh, seeing that way to me, it feels almost similar to makeup. So if there's certain things you can do with it, like it smooths your face a little bit because mm-hmm. you're like, oh, I just want to have that look as if I have makeup on. I almost don't think that's so bad. It's it's more like saving money. I'm not putting my makeup on today, and I'm still able to do a video and feel confident enough. Yeah. It's when it changes your features. I mean, people it's, have it on all the time. Yeah, and you the can thing see is, it. it's just kind of an escalation of the things that have always been happening and obviously yes it impacts men as well but it is an industry like the beauty industry just hugely targets women yeah and it's telling you there's something wrong with you and selling you a solution and it used to be you know the, the special k can you pinch an inch mm-hmm. if you had they told you if you could pinch an inch you had to lose weight and here's the cereal that will help you yeah and it's now they put a filter on you and then you go oh god 
and they go that's what you should be looking like here's fillers here's yeah face creams here's everything and it's similar to makeup and you know I'm not saying I'm beyond this I dye my hair I get my eyebrows done I wear makeup but is it a choice made in a vacuum is it yeah. purely like we say oh it's to make ourselves feel better but why do you not feel good about yourself without it in the first place mm-hmm. yeah it's probably because someone the patriarchy <laughs> has told has told you you feel bad without that and I think when you're an adult you are responsible enough to make these decisions for yourself mm-hmm. and you know you can take the media the you know there will be a level if you don't have the education like I said this impacts older people as well but you know you, you've got to deal with yourself if you're an adult but there's like young teenagers and you see TikToks like my 5am makeup routine before school and I'm like that's sad like yeah you know there's every these kids going to school and I believe filters and TikTok and stuff is responsible part for this but like they're going there to educate get educated like you know go and change the world make it a better place and boys are doing it but the girls are doing it with this other kind of layer of work on top of them if I, do I look good while I'm doing it yeah yeah and that they shouldn't have that burden and i think it's our position as adults and especially us as like adults in the digital sector to really kind of reflect on what is the impact our industry and these platforms having on young people absolutely i think that is like a really valid point i think although there is a rise of filters i have definitely seen that the change from like our generation being like the Instagram generation to now like probably more the TikTok generation is a big change between everything that I post is perfectly polished and it's Mm -hmm. this perfect presentation of how I want people to see me. I do actually appreciate the way that the younger generation and a lot of people our age as well are posting TikToks because it's like I've had a funny idea or something's happened to me and I just Mm -hmm. want to post it now and it's actually more about what I want to say and who I am in this moment than how I look and I love seeing videos like that where you can see that someone has literally just picked up their camera because something's happened and they want to share it with the world I yeah. think that's the good side of the way social media is going now where it's everything does feel it's a bit more authentic, authentic but that's where they get you right so this is where I think it gets really dangerous these filters because it is all about authenticity mm-hmm. and it's like it's a race to the moon because they're now trying to push to create filters that you know don't seem like they're there at yeah, all and they're not polished but they're slight improvements exactly. which makes them more believable and yeah. sneakier and I mean some of these filters I've put the ginger filter on before Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow, wish I was ginger. And I'm like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> like, I am. <laughs> and it's it's just, oh, they're all competing to kind of just sell you. Yeah, just sell. I know, it's yeah. so interesting. I, one thing I like about TikTok is if you have used a filter in the TikTok app, it flags it. Mm-hmm. You can obviously yes. have used a filter elsewhere and then uploaded it. But I think that is a good step in the right direction. It's definitely not enough. But I always find that if I'm looking at a video and I'm like, god i wish i could look like that and then i look down and it's like yassification yeah. i'm like okay well i think yeah. as well it's kind of we're only becoming big, like, beginning to become to terms with like the the impact of social media yeah. like it's only maybe the last three four years that fact checking's become a big thing because suddenly platforms start to acknowledge that you know politically they have power socially they have power false information has power and it's kind of the same vein of thing yeah that mm-hmm. starting to realize you know this is having an impact on people disproportionately and young people and women and everyone as a whole as well though yeah and we should do something I don't know I know I th- no I definitely think there needs to be something done and I think what you were saying around what can we actually do on our level because I'm not head of TikTok I'm not going to be able to make Enough, this kind yeah. of impact but I think what you were saying around putting real people in your marketing I think that is mm-hmm. a, that's a big focus now because it actually does just help your engagement it helps your growth like having people at the front of what you do but having real people and like seeing diversity and seeing yourself as you are in the images that you see online I think that is another really strong way for us to move forward where you're actually you're over you're over running it with something positive instead of mm-hmm. trying to enforce something yeah. negative like oh we need we need everyone to know that you're using a filter yeah. you, you, I would much rather that we like, use a positive force to, I think a yeah. general move towards things like body neutrality as opposed to body yeah, positivity yeah. Yeah. Can you just explain to the audience so, if you yeah, body before. neutrality is the kind of stance of just accepting your body for being a thing that transports you about that you exist and having a completely neutral feeling to it it doesn't need to be beautiful it can be it doesn't need to be there's nothing wrong with it not being it's just being allowed to live in peace just yeah. to just know peace body. I think that's like just taking the focus away from what 
a person mm -hmm. looks like. like. I think that is that is really it. I think the main thing with yeah. being on the internet is be aware of yourself, protect yourself, but also think about the impact that you are having on other people. Mm -hmm. You do, I think, as an internet user, you inherently have a responsibility to other people because anything that you put out there is going to be seen by probably, hopefully, at least one other person. Mm -hmm. And that can have an impact on them. So I think it is something that we all need to be more aware of, hopefully, that being on yeah. the internet does come with a responsibility. Yeah. So obviously we've spoken quite a lot about some really heavy stuff. Probably the, This is probably the heaviest episode so far. Well, you guys, it's light and breezy. In some like, ways. We always find a way to take it to the heavy. Yeah. And then way back up to the wild. <laughs> I know. So let's do that. Yeah, so let's take it back. You told me, I come with something silly and then gave me like body dysmorphia. I know, I it really, I'm so sorry about that, Louise. We'll talk about Coney 2012 <laughs> next time. I don't know if like a warlord is any more silly. I know, but that's the, that's the internet. But this is the thing, like when, often the thing that gets you out of that heavy subjects are quite often that people do to get out of these things is to kind of look at flip it and kind of like go take it up go in a more absurdist cartoonish direction yes and what better way to kind of do that than through yassification yes yes <laughs> yassification um for those who don't know what yassification is anyone I don't have definition. the dictionary definition have you got that in your i notes? i do actually is it in the dictionary? Um, it's, probably it's, it's, yassification is to Take something that is not yes and yes. Stop. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Well, that makes so much more sense. Really then. It's, like it's not like the Scottish yes. It's more on the. It's, I'm pretty sure it's like an African American thing. It started it's from, and then um, it became drag and yeah. then it became like kind of like LGBT. Yasification in its current definition basically means like. It's a big glow up. A glow up a, beyond a your imagination. Up or yeah, like Let's put glow up to, in to the end degree. commas, please. Yeah. A uh, glow up that does not exist. It's done purely through face training yeah, or Microsoft Paint. Yeah, like, it's taking the most like the ridiculous, like like massive cheekbones, mm -hmm. massive chin, massive do you know what I mean? Like massive eyes, massive. Handsome eyes. Squidward made glam. Yeah. Like, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Google Yasification, you'll see exactly what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. But I think that's that's an interesting defence mechanism mm -hmm. to what is quite a, often quite a harmful subject is that yeah. this is how we deal with these things, isn't it? Like on the internet a lot of the time. Like we need to take it to a fun, funny place because that's like, that is the only way where you can actually start to deal with anything, I think, in life. Yeah. We you can laugh, make a place of humour. Like make it cringy for Gen Z to use a filter because then they'll have like, you know, 35 year olds going, oh, yes. And they'll go, like, oh my God. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you've kind of got to take it. I think that's where it filters and that kind of thing are more appropriate because it is so, it's, it's for comedy mm -hmm. at that point, you know, like yeah. it's, it's not, um, you know, actually trying to be, trying to make someone more attractive. It's just kind of going, here's these ridiculous beauty standards yeah. and let's, let's amplify that to the most ridiculous. Yeah. Degree. And I think people are doing kind of funny stuff with it on, like TikTok and stuff like there's been some trends which basically use those apps in a really funny way yeah. and like use that type inappropriate yes yeah like yeah. on the, the Giga Chad's like yeah. jaw and, and I think like I think that's where it's like you do just need to take it to a ridiculous place to almost prove to everyone how ridiculous it is so then when you look at every level of it you go yeah that is silly but with all of that in mind yeah let mm -hmm. us breathe let us laugh I don't know if I'll ever laugh you, again. <laughs> I'm too self-aware yeah. now. <laughs> Are you ready for the final part of the show? In fact, yeah. any closing remarks, Louise, before you let go? Um, it's a very heavy topic, but I think the biggest way out of it is for us to make like Linda from Clyde Bank put it on all of her Facebook profile pictures and then it'll be forever too embarrassing and it'll just disappear. Nice. Perfect. Fair enough, yep. Let's okay, that. so now we get into the fun part of the, okay. of the podcast and it is the quiz. So yeah. obviously we've spoken about yassification and that is exactly what your quiz is on, Louise. Okay. Now, for audio listeners, I'm sorry. This is unfortunately one of those times, one of those rare times where I only a, a visual medium will do. I but can we all do a do script. Yeah. Oh, we are, we are gonna seeing. describe. We are gonna oh, describe. Oh, is this a picture Ella. round? <laughs> oh, picture I've round. got a pub yeah. quiz tonight. This is like a warm up. <laughs> round one. Oh. Oh. Which oh. and so the 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 aim of this is to guess which celebrity <laughs> has been yassified here. So round one. <laughs> okay. Who do we think this is, guys? Okay, this one. Oh, I think I know this one. We've taken to absolute extremes. For I think so. It's, it's a woman with long brown hair, which is I don't think this is a woman. I think this is like look at the pointiness of that chin. I think this is Tom Cruise. I think it's Timothy Chalamet. Oh, could be Timothy Chalamet. 
He's got that little like Victorian yassified schoolboy look. Yeah, and but extremely piercing eyes. Again, really dark eyes. It looks like if a, a, a ghost I'm was yassified. Final, final answer. I'll go to Timothy Chalamet. Yeah. That is exactly. Who oh, is. oh God. well done, guys! That is Timothy okay. Chalamet. To be fair, somehow yassified. yassified, it looks less sharp. We'll definitely put all of these on the Instagram so you can follow yeah. along oh with us. God. Right, well, I instantly know who this is, but it is deeply, deeply, it's, deeply alarming. It's like a combo of that woman from 10 years younger and <laughs> the characters that, that used to be. Like this, her. And do you remember the game IMVU? No. no. It was like a digital avatar game. It looks like like a sim this isn't combined with... This is yet. yet. Like, so we're looking at a woman... Yeah, a, a woman, woman who could have who changed the United yeah. States of America. Yeah. Who has a... Do we want to take a stab? A white bob. Um, I'm going to... Well, we'll just go for Glasses, a really slick looking makeup look, but is sitting maybe with some big gloves on that are not pictured. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, I think we all know what we're going for here. Yeah. Bernie name. Sanders. Senator yeah. Bernie Sanders of Vermont. That one's really scary. That is really something else, that one. Yeah. Okay. That one's a lot. The okay. next one, that you should be able to get this one. Oh. Wait. That's, oh, right. that's not yassified enough for me to enjoy. That just looks like he genuinely tries. This is yassified Ed Sheeran. I don't like the fact his eyes are going in different directions, so he's not focusing on anything. That's Ed Sheeran's real eyes, though. I'm, oh. not, I'm not mad at yassified Ed Sheeran, if I'm being <laughs> perfectly honest. He looks good there. Yeah. Like. Right, that is Ed Sheeran right there. That's good. I mean, Love there's that. not many celebrities that have that hair, so it did make it a bit easier for us there. Uh, okay. Okay, last one. Okay. Nervous. Oh. God. Right. This doesn't even look like it could have ever been a person. This looks like it was. What's that? This um, looks like my attempts at art in high school. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> when you used to be able to do like makeup oh, games online. I think I know who it is, and it's nothing to do with the picture of the person. Look at the little beams around the outside. Please don't tell me this is Jesus. <laughs> I think it's Jesus. <laughs> it's a- Jesus' balayage is sickening. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That is a mad one to end on. Thank you for that, Josh. Uh, no problem at all. Uh, so, sorry to our audio I've listeners. Seen, I've seen God and he's Please, please, please but I'm go saying, to Instagram. Sorry to our audio listeners, but you're welcome to our video listeners. <laughs> Um, actually also well you're welcome to our audio listeners because that was frightening <laughs> <laughs> so um thanks for joining us louise um, do you have nice. anything you want to plug before you go um come to sunshine on leaf as <laughs> the boy victoria hall's november 8th to 11th oh my god why is that are you are you in that do you not do i know i do theater i just casually talk about theater i do time. but the audience might not i do do th- i do do theater and um, i do do are you gonna be assified on stage i'm going to be English on stage, well, is, if that counts. Is that just as an English person well, saying yassified Scott? English is yassification, you decide. That's for our audience to decide. <laughs> is an English person just a yassified Scott? <laughs> <laughs> that feels like the clickbait title that we put on the YouTube channel. <laughs> so, Wait, we need to do the screenshot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's us for another episode of Social Media Social Club. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and TikTok whereabouts Hannah? Uh, we are at social media dot social club. That's correct and like and subscribe Thanks. on YouTube if that's where you're watching uh, if you listen to some streaming platforms leave us a five star review that is very much appreciated uh, and yeah that's all for another episode thank you bye 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 are we even the other camera? <laughs>